This one is the entrail. Entrail, yeah. which is the anus. Uh, you can say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can say that. Yo, I am feeling this anus meat so much. Fort Lee, New Jersey, one of the fastest growing Korean enclaves in America. It boasts great food, clean streets, rare dishes, and plenty of former circle nightclub goers who have retired from the nightlife scene. From afar, it may not look like much more than a quaint town right off the George Washington Bridge, but the magic is that it's the quiet K-Town. Now, is it worth heading out here from the city? Will it always be quiet? Hit that like button and let's find out. All right, in today's episode of The World NY, we're hitting up Fort Lee, New Jersey. It has a huge Korean population. We got a lot of friends there. It's a place I've never been. Let's go check it out. All right, so starting off our journey in Fort Lee, we're at our first spot, but I wanna introduce my friend Chi. Chi, you've opened up a new cafe in Fort Lee, and you're gonna show us some things that we haven't seen before, things that are gonna be hard to find even in K-Town, New York. All right, so we're at the first spot called Obleton. It's a Korean barbecue joint. It highlights the fisherman culture in Korea. Let's go check it out. All right, man, in front of us, we have this amazing coastline Korean seafood grill feast. And I'm here with the owner, Q, of Obleton. Q, can you tell me real quick and describe what is different about your restaurant? I wouldn't say that it's street food. I would say that this is more found towards the beach line and like the island of Jeju-do. They'll take the raw ingredients that come directly from down the block or the local fishermen, and they'll put it straight on the grill for you. And uh, I think I got that idea from the K-dramas and the movies that I always see, I'm like, hey, that would be great here. And so this is uh, agujim, that's in Korean, it means uh, spicy monkfish. It's an array of seafood, bean sprouts, onions in there, we have green onions in there, and we put it all together and put it on this big plate for everyone to enjoy. Spicy Korean monkfish. Agujim. It's really meaty. Yeah. I feel like at some point I was biting into like a lobster tail. It was a little bit bouncy, but then it breaks down and kind of shreds in your mouth. That's great. Mm. So this is cold pork feet mixed in with our house salad with some pine nuts. It's a sweet and spicy wasabi sauce. And we also have jellyfish in here. Korean pig feet salad. I never thought I would say that pig feet salad is super refreshing. That's not like a phrase that I would have initially thought of saying. That's really good. This is just a little mini broth. What I do is I heat this up, and then once these guys open, they're like full of juice, and I pour it in there, add it to the broth. And so that turns in essentially into like a clam broth. Let's go in on these fresh clams, hot off the grill, dipped in the broth. Let's go. I just love how the flavor of the broth complemented the clam and it didn't overtake it, so that was fire. All right, Q, so you've grown up in Fort Lee, but you've spent a lot of time in Powell Park, and these are the main Korean areas in New Jersey. How would you describe the difference between Fort Lee and Powell Park? I feel as if the mayor is trying to make this an extension of the city. We got little air pockets of Little Italy here. If you go down Main Street, there's a lot of Italian areas, Korean area, and the diversity, I think, is the main difference between Powell Park and Fort Lee. All right, real quick, to end off our meal, we got some Korean sodas. And this one I've seen, but this one is new from Jinro. Is this a soda? I say that it's like a slightly spiked soda. No, Jinro label is one of the most popular For sure. in the soju brand. I think they wanted to do a little bit of a twist. So we're getting some insider news on the soju battles here. I think that uh, right now, actually in Korea, Koreans are boycotting chum chum right now. What? Why? Because Why? Why? So you come to Fort Lee, you get the soju news. I don't know. Because chum chum is headed by a Japanese company. Wow! I'm out. All right, Q, thank you so much for the meal, man. Where else should we head in Fort Lee? The heart of Fort Lee, it would be Main Street. Check out Cheese Place. Deep Floor Cafe. Also, check out my other place, Food Garden, which is right off of Main Street. But that's the heart of Fort Lee. That's where you should be going. All right, yo, Q, thank you so much, appreciate man. You. I appreciate that. Chi. Let's go. Let's go.
Okay, Chi, starting off our journey here through Fort Lee, we're gonna start off at your new cafe, D4 Boutique. You're doing things a little bit differently. Why did you wanna open up a cafe like this during the pandemic? To be honest, I was kind of screwed. Like many of us, I did get laid off. And you know, when you get pushed to a corner, you kind of look back at like, okay, what were my original dreams? So the opportunity presented itself and I took it. So we have our signature teddy lattes. This one's the teddy matcha latte. The bear is made out of matcha. And then mm -hmm. you have this blue one. This is the butterfly, butterfly flower. Okay, he's sweating a little bit. He's getting a little hot. <laughs> oh, and then you have the what? The coffee bear? Yes, this is our original. I, I want to try this butterfly tea. That kind of tastes like taro a little bit. Yo, I like this. I don't know. This is my first time having it, so oh, I feel like... It's usually a little bit stinky, people say. But I've never had blue butterfly tea. Okay, so Chi, actually, I noticed at your spot, you do sell a lot of other people's items. And this is the newest one that you're carrying. It's Filipino-owned company over in Jersey City. It's bananas. It's banana pudding. This is the OG. We also have cookies and cream, matcha, and Nutella. Wow. I always loved banana cream pie. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of the banana pudding version of it. Shout out to bananas. And before we go, to our next spot, we gotta try this Korean fried chicken from Boom Boo Chicken right down the street. But yo, to help me try this chicken, I am going to enlist the help of local foodie, originally from California, now based in Fort Lee. John, why don't you come in here, man? What's up, what's up? Yeah, yeah. Made to order, nice crunch. I love how crispy the skin is, and so easy to just tear away the skin from the bone. I love it. About to do the uh, flat real quick. All right, Chi, so we've made it to Main Street in Fort Lee. It feels like a very nice, like, suburban Main Street, somewhat urban, but you said it's changing a little bit. A lot of business owners wanted to bring some New York flavor here, so we're here at Pearly Juiced, which is the first vegan juice bar in Fort Lee. First vegan juice bar in Fort Lee. Hey, never mad at more healthy stuff. Why not? Let's go. Let's go. with the husband and wife owner, we got Sung and Jenny. Tell me how your spot is kind of different than other juiceries that I might have been to. We do everything plant-based, so there's no animal products in the store. All the almond milks we make in-house, all the nut butters we make in-house. We do smoothies, juices, like kale chips, desserts, and everything is vegan. That's what makes it different from all other juice bars. So there's a juice here that is so strong that you guys recommend me not do it right now? Yes, the natural remedy that we came up with is made with lemon, ginger, oil of oregano, and cayenne extra. You guys created it recently, Absolutely. and we're like, hey, everybody needs to boost their immunity. Let's make the strongest shot possible. It's the one thing that I took every single day since this whole pandemic hit. Hit me with it. Hi. You saying this like we're at uh, Fat Buddha, and this is my sixth shot. Hi. All right. It's obviously heavy lemon and like... Yeah, the, the cayenne is opening up your sinuses. Okay. The oil of oregano is antifungal and antibacterial. is gonna go down and just kickstart your immune system. <sighs> All right, here's a super burrito. Blanche, huge collard green leaf. I've actually never had a burrito like this before. It kind of looks like a spring roll. It's like a bite of salad, except just fold it up. I'll say this, between this and the reboot shop, I've definitely offset anything that I've eaten in the past like week. All right, so we took a quick little turn right off of Main Street and we're here in front of Mavi's that's doing some Korean-Italian fusion. Chi, what are some dishes that we're getting that are pretty unique here? So one of the pizzas that we're gonna try is the kimchi bulgogi pizza. All right, I'm here with the owner, June, of Mavi's. It's a really interesting menu that you have that's kind of fusing Korean and Italian flavors. What inspired you to do it? Because of this, like a COVID-19, we had a problem with our menu because we usually have a brunch menu last year. So this year, I was thinking about, I've researched a lot. The number one selling is just chicken, pizza, those like more like a takeout menu. So we convert to the pizza. We use a special dough. I make the dough every day. We use a bit, organic bit. Okay. It makes more flavor, more crunch. Kimchi bulgogi pizza. pizza with the beet crust. The cheese was nice. It was saucy, but not too wet. It still held together. The crust is fluffy. Man. Just solid pizza. All right, so here I have the churro hot dog. I had to get it. As you guys know, corn dogs are really popular as a Korean street food. 
At first I thought mm. that was gonna be really weird because it was gonna take something very sweet and cinnamony mm. and you wrap it around a hot dog, but that works out great. Bro. It's crunchy and crispy on the outside. There's some sweetness, you have the hot dog in the middle. Man, I think you guys gotta try this too. All right, John, so you're originally from La Crescenta, California, you know, which is kind of a Korean neighborhood, but now you live out here. Are there like parallels and like similarities between the Korean areas, between the East Coast and the West Coast? This is very nostalgic of how I grew up going to mom and pop restaurants in La Crescenta. New York and LA K-Towns, you go to party and drink, but when you really want that connection with your community and have this kind of food, you have to come out to Jersey. All right, before we leave Mavi's, we got to wash it down with some drinks. What do you got, Chi? That is something I've never heard of. Yeah, there's a lot of bubble tea flavors, but have you guys ever heard of a mugwort bubble tea? Mugwort. Mm -hmm. What is it? That sounds like not very appealing, though. It's a type of weed. It has a lot of health benefits from what I read up on, but... Um... So an actual weed weed, like... Stay Wait. off the weed! <laughs> It's really light, kind of like a graininess, but it's it's really smooth. I would say this probably tastes like kind of a wheat tea matcha slash hoji cha. So it's not super strong, but it's really nice and uh, it's easy to drink, man. But yo, Mavi's in Fort Lee. All right, guys, so our next stop on Main Street in Fort Lee is Gopjong Story. It recently opened up. I know that this is a spot that they have in K-Town, New York, but we're gonna be trying some new stuff that I haven't had before, so what are we eating? So we're checking out the Gopjong, the beef intestine, a beef platter, and a steak tartare. Small intestines out in the suburbs. Let's get it. All right, I think we gotta start off our gopchang meal here with the beef heart that's on top. Beef. Got these tripe right oh, here. I actually like tripe. Beef heart. Yum tong. I definitely taste some of that iron from the blood, but it's actually, it's really tender. So tender. Man. Yo, MJ, mm. you're from Seoul, Korea. Can you tell us about what it means when you come to America and you see these big neighborhoods and it's a huge Korean neighborhood and, and everybody loves Korean culture and like pop culture yep. at least and food. What do, what do you think about all that? I'm kind of half Korean, so I basically lived in Russia, so. Were you born in Russia? Or just, were you well, just raised there? I'm just born in Korea, but I went to Russia when I was 10 and oh till 21. Isn't there a Korean community in Uzbekistan? Yeah. Like there's that. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Мёгджон Шэ. Not gonna lie, I'm not a big fan of intestines, especially the big intestine overall. But let's do it. Big intestine, Daechan. Holy so truly. Hit or miss usually, but I love the texture. It's like my favorite part. More weird thing here is the entrail, which is AKA the butt. Who would have thought you'd come to Fort Lee, be in a nice family setting, and start eating butthole? I mean, I'm just saying, it's uh, it's not what you would expect. This is the entrails, AKA anus, AKA bak chan. All right. Why are we eating booty? I like that. Mm. Oh, I'm scared. I actually, I actually that's the best. Good. Really? It's like the crispiest. Yo. It'll be the best. I think you'll like it. I so yeah. wanted to make it. Interesting. I think you'll like it. <laughs> you, yeah. No. Nah. It's actually good. I actually enjoy that. People out there, they know I'm not really into intestines. <laughs> But the anus? I might be down with the A. Mm. Yeah! Oh yeah. <laughs> Butthole. It's the smallest. Yo, it's the crispiest. The five out of five here is yeah. the entrails, buttholes. It's good. Come to go, John. All right, Chi, we just turned the corner. Behind us, Sushi Kai, why are we here? It's been hard for me to find like a good omakase spot that's so accessible in the city. And then I came across this little gem on Main Street. You'll see how it gives you a New York feel. All right guys, Sushi Kai. I'm very confident in our product and our staff and the way that we, you know, uh, handle and serve our ingredients. That it's, it's really excellent. As long as you know how to you know, handle ingredients and make it taste good and, and work properly, you know, anybody could do it as long as you have the passion and the will to do it. All right, so we have our main section of the omakase dinner, but Chi, you said we gotta eat this a certain way and I actually, have not actually had omakase this way, so can you walk us through? Okay, so let's get rid of the chopsticks, and we're gonna be using our hands today. All right, so we have this little napkin that's folded up, and you told me not to take it out. After each one, you get to just kind of wipe it like this. Okay. And clean your fingers. Okay, here I got otoro. It is the fattiest of the tuna. It's above chutoro. This is otoro. Just a little bit of a dab right there. Wow. 
melted in my mouth, completely disappeared. That was so good. Let's go on to round two. I am going for the Hokkaido scallop with truffle butter. Oh, this already has. <laughs> wow. That was like truffle mm. butter to the max. I've actually never experienced intense truffle butter on that level before. It worked nicely with the Hokkaido scallop, super fatty. I never had sushi like that. All right, Chi, can this spot in Fort Lee compare itself to, you know, all the fancy, cool omakases in the city? I think a lot of omakases in the city have been getting a little too gimmicky and like getting too playful with it. Personally, I like it a little bit more traditional and I think Sushi Kai did a perfect traditional with a hint of a good twist to it. It feels like I'm transported in a super brand new build out in Manhattan and it's just so cool to see this in Jersey. I mean, Fort Lee. All right, everybody, that wraps it up for this episode of The World NY, or maybe I should say NJ. Shout out to John and Chi for joining us. Let me know in the comments down below, one, if we missed any spot in Fort Lee, and number two, if there's any other places you guys want us to go. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. Yo, I am feeling this anus meat so much. But yo, it's got like the fake uh, nut meat in there. You know what it is? If you're gonna eat something so dirty, Want to eat it in a clean place? <laughs> that sounded so odd.